Welcome back to AGB Art. In tonight's video, we're going for part four of how to play American Mahjong. This is a summary video of what we learned in part three. If you enjoy the video, please press the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel to get more videos on art, decor, and how to play Mahjong. Remember, you have to have a Mahjong card from the league in order to play. Everybody has one in front of them. So all the tiles are dumped on the table and there are four players. Basically, we are scrambling the tiles, trying to mix them up. Then all four players will build a wall in front of their plastic rack it is 19 tiles with two layers. So two layers of 19 tiles in front of them. Once everybody has built a wall in front of their rack, each person is going to roll the dice and the one with the highest number will be designated as East. So I'm going to pretend that I was designated East. Now the person who is East will roll the dice again. And I got an eight. So I'm going to count from right to left on my wall to the number eight, to the eighth tile. And the way we play is that the person who is east hands out the tiles. You don't look at them until you have all of them. So this was really hard to do with one hand. So give me a second here while I stick it on the tripod. I've gotten to the eighth tile I'm going to move my plastic rack back this is just easier to make a little bit of room and I'm going to start by giving myself four tiles now I'm going counterclockwise and doing four for each of my players four more for me we're going to go around again and you can see I ran out of tiles, so I take the next wall. This is the only time we go clockwise for anything, is taking the wall. So everybody's getting a second block of four tiles. Nobody's looking at them yet. Everybody's getting a third block of four tiles. Now, the last thing that I do for me, is I'm going to pick the first and the third tile. Those are mine. And then each person gets one more. Because I am east, I'm starting the game with 14 while everybody else has 13. Once all of the tiles have been given out, then people are putting them on their racks and you've got to remember, in front of the racks, everybody has a Mahjong card laid out. Again, they're copyrighted. I don't have four cards, but that's what's missing here. And what people are doing is they're organizing their tiles. So the easiest way for me to do it is to have jokers and flowers on the left, the odd numbers, the even numbers, and then any dragons and winds on the end. But everybody does it differently. I can see by looking at my hand, I have way more even numbers than odd. So I'm probably not going to look at the one, three, five, seven, nine category. This is a different way to do it. You can do it by suits. So they have their bams here, their dots, and their cracks and dragons on the end. 
There's no right way to do it. It's whatever is comfortable for you. This hand is organized the way that I would do it. Jokers and flowers on the end. Odd numbers. Even numbers. You can see I have two even numbers. That cuts me right out of the 2468 category right there. I've got a dragon and I've got almost a single word that is part of the card. I just need an S. So I would probably keep that. And the fourth person has it by suit. She had a lot of BAMs in her hand. So if you have a whole lot of one suit, sometimes it helps to do it consecutively. And you can see she's probably going to go for the consecutive run. Once you've got your tiles organized the way you like, and hopefully you've narrowed it down to which category you're going to pick a hand in, the next thing you're going to do, and everybody at the table does this, pick three tiles that you want to get rid of. We're going to start the Charleston, and it begins by picking three tiles and moving them to the player on your right. In the first Charleston, it's three to the right, three across, three to the left. As you're getting ready for the Charleston, remember these good tips. You don't ever trade a joker. And you try your hardest not to trade a flower because a lot of the hands on the card start with flowers. I don't like to pick consecutive numbers. Here I'm going to show you, I have a three and a two. I don't want to give that away because if someone's doing a consecutive, it would be like giving them a gift. So I tend to pick three completely unrelated tiles that I don't need. If I was going to do a hand in one, three, five, seven, nine, most of them, the ones and the threes are the same suit. So I'm going to pick the one dot to get rid of. Once you've got your three tiles, you turn them over and slide them in the first Charleston to the right. Now the person on my left may have already given me my three, but I can't look at them until I've given away the three that I'm going to give away. Everybody is passing three tiles to their right. Next, everybody passes three tiles to the player across from them. And lastly, everybody passes three tiles to the person on their left. What if during the Charleston, you don't have three tiles that you don't like? You have maybe one or two. This is how you do a blind pass. This person only has a six dot to give away. She got three from the person on her left. So what she's going to do is just pick two. Don't even look at them. Turn her tile over and pass it. So now she's just got one new one to put on her rack. At the end of the first Charleston, there's a couple of decisions to make. Should there be a second Charleston, a courtesy pass, or nothing at all? If you have three or more junky tiles, vote for a second Charleston. If you have only two or one that are bad, then do a courtesy pass. Or you could just start playing the game now. In the second Charleston, everybody picks three tiles they don't like and passes them to the left first. Then they pass across and then they pass to the right. In a courtesy pass, you and the player across from you decide how many tiles and you will trade that number of tiles. Once all the trading is complete, the game can begin. 
remember I'm east. I have 14 tiles. So I start play by picking one of my 14 tiles, putting it on the table and naming it. So I put the tile down and I say five bam. The player next to me is really interested in that five bam because she could build. But the problem is you cannot pick up to build. You can only pick up to complete a grouping. Let's review this idea of grouping. Looking at this fake hand, it's four flowers, three twos, three fours, a pair of sixes, and a pair of eights. The four flowers make up a group. So if you had three flowers, you needed one more, and somebody discarded it, then you could pick it up. But if you only had two of them, you can't build on it. Same with the twos. If you have two of them, a third one would complete that grouping and you could pick it up. Same with the fours. If you had two of them and a third one got discarded, you could pick it up. The issue is with the pairs. The pairs cannot be picked up until it is the very last tile that you need for mahjong. So say for example, you've already got your flowers, your twos, your fours, you picked up two sixes out of the wall, you already had an eight, and all you need is that last eight. Then you can pick it up and claim mahjong. So this player can't pick up that five bam. So she picks a tile from the wall, and this is how it works. You pick up the tile, bring it over to your rack, and you rack it right away. Put it on the rack. That stops any other player from being able to pick up that five bam that was laying there. Now nobody can touch it, it not even for the rest of the game. It's gone, it's dead. So this player decides, is she gonna keep what she picked up and discard or discard something else looks like she's getting rid of the east puts it down and says east so that five bam tile is gone it's out of the game nobody can ever pick it up and now the one that is available as a discard is the east the next player can't use the east so she's going to pick a tile from the wall and immediately rack it. That stops all play. Nobody can pick East up now. She decides whether or not she's going to keep it and picks the tile up for a discard, lays it on the table and says two dot. We're going to pretend that this person needs a pair of soaps for her hand. She goes to the wall and picks a joker. But here's the problem. You cannot use a joker for a pair. Not ever. Not for mahjong. Not ever. Next we have a person who has an exposed pung of one dots using a joker. And it's my turn and guess what I have? I have a one dot. Yes, I'm going to exchange it. But first, I need to pick a tile from the wall, rack it, and then I will politely hand the player my one dot and say, Joker, please. And they'll exchange my one dot and I'll have a Joker in my hand. Once we've used up the blue wall, the next one to take is the yellow one. This is probably the only time we go clockwise. Say I need a discard and I'm ready to finish a grouping. I'm looking at that one crack. Somebody discards a one crack and I say, hold, please hold, or 
I want that. And I immediately have to put the entire group up on top of my rack to expose it. Now here I'm just showing you, maybe it's a Kong, and if so, if there's a joker in it, I like to put it in between the tiles, or maybe it's just a Pong of three. Or maybe it's a Quint. So that finished grouping has to be three, four, or five tiles has to be the very last tile to make that grouping, unless it's a pair and you're ready for mahjong. When someone picks up a discard, it changes whose turn is next. Okay, so it's time for this person to take a turn. And I'm just reminding you here, we've got the green, the yellow, and the blue. And play normally goes counterclockwise. So it is now the person with the pink Rex's turn. And technically, after that, yellow would be next. She's going to take a tile and rack it. And she's going to decide that she doesn't want it. So she puts it on the table and says, one dot. Now the blue person wants that one dot to complete a pong of one dots. So she says, please hold, I'll take that. Puts her tiles up on the rack to show because she's completing that grouping. And she discards a green dragon. Now, technically, it should be the yellow person's turn, but it is not. It goes to the person on the right. So it will be the green person's turn now, not yellow. It's like they skip their turn and it's time for green to play. So it's the person to the right of the person who picked up the discard. Okay, it's almost the end of the game. And I did a hand that was two flowers, four ones, four fours, and four sixes. So I still need that six crack. I'm missing one. Now I'm going to pretend it's somebody's turn. Maybe the person with the pink rack. They draw a tile, they rack it, and then they do a discard. And they are going to discard a six crack, which is what I need. So I say, please hold, I'll take that. Or I could even call out Mahjong. So when I get Mahjong, I am picking up the 14th tile. There is no discard with it. And once I claim Mahjong, I put all my tiles up on the top of the rack and tell the players which hand I was playing, and they check it. While they're checking it, I would highly recommend that you not dump all your tiles and think the game is over, because if I made a mistake, then my hand is dead and play could continue. I know it can seem incredibly overwhelming to keep up with everything to remember, so I wanted to do a short summary video of part three. If you can find a local game, I really recommend that you sit in and observe how the players play. You'll be much more comfortable. I will continue to make more videos about American Mahjong. Thanks for watching.